This video is sponsored by Dollar Shave Club. Click the link down below and stay tuned after the video for more information. Playing games on your cell phone nowadays is pretty normal. But could you imagine trying to do that back in the 90s? How would that even work? You can't play games on this thing! Can you? No, you can't. But that didn't stop Nintendo or Bandai with their Terabico toy system. <laughs> So, what is this thing exactly? It just looks like a normal kid's toy that when you press buttons, it makes wacky noises. Well, no actually. The Terabico was an interactive toy that you would actually hook up to your TV or VCR. There were nine different VHS tapes you could buy and play the game with. Everything from Hello Kitty, to Dragon Ball, to yup, even Super Mario Bros. Every anime was about 30 minutes long, staying true to the source material and giving you an educational adventure, all while providing a genuinely entertaining show in the process. Throughout the episode, the characters will come across an issue, usually involving counting, memorization, and other miscellaneous young children show questions. The main character will stop the episode and pick up a phone to call you, and your toy will... actually ring. They then proceed to ask you a question. It's multiple choice and you need to select the correct answer on your telephone. This toy was really ahead of its time. Actually seeing it ring and light up in accordance with what's happening on TV is awesome. But enough jibber jabber. Let's dust off the VCR. Yeah, I still have that thing. And let's check out Mario to Yoshi no Bokenland or Mario and Yoshi's Adventure Land. Now, this specific anime came out in the early to mid-90s, and the Mario game that was out and hot at the time was Super Mario World! <laughs> Meaning this anime is completely Mario World themed, with its characters, setting, and even music. This is awesome, especially since Super Mario World is probably my favorite 2D Mario game. So the show starts off with Mario and Luigi receiving a letter from Princess Peach, saying they should come and visit Dinosaur Island. And since the princess isn't busy being captured, Mario and Luigi have nothing else to do, I guess. So they board a plane and begin their wonderful vacation. Mario to Yoshi na Bokenlanda. Mario and Yoshi's Adventure Land. Yoshi's only been shown in a picture so far. What about Luigi? He's right there! <laughs> oh well, I'll let it slide for now, considering they're using actual music from the game. Mario and Luigi then decide to break the fourth wall, saying they feel like they're forgetting something. Oh yeah. Us, the viewers at home. Luigi busts out the Terabico telephone. What, you just carrying that on you at all times? Oh, but you can't bother to have a spare fire flower in there when I need it. Oh. Hi, Mario. Why are you such a dick to Luigi? So that was all just a test to make sure the toy's working. Once the Mario Brothers land, they're greeted by Bowser, who of course has stolen the princess. Come on! And it's our job to save her. Hello, Waffle Enterprises. So, here we have our first question. What creature do we think is going to come out of the egg? Gosh, I didn't expect these kind of brain busters this early. Well, if you've played Super Mario World, you should know what's in that egg. It's the Koopa! It's the Yoshi! You're given about 10 seconds to think of your answer and hit the correct button on your toy. If you guessed Yoshi, then congrats! You're smart! Ah, look, it's Oh god, he talks. Yoshi then joins our adventure to rescue the princess. We then come across a bridge full of enemies where... Oh, 
ブルとノコノコとドラボンの中でどれが一番たくさん Okay, confession time. When I first watched this, I wasn't exactly paying super attention. So when this question came up, I had no idea what the answer was. I started doing this complicated math formula, but it turns out all you had to do was count the enemies on screen. I really overthought this children's question. The correct answer were the Koopas, followed by a fun counting session full of violence! Also, congrats! We learned to count in Japanese. Yoshi finishes off the rest of the enemies by burning them alive, leaving behind another egg, this time containing a cute, beat up yellow Yoshi. He tells us to continue our journey without him because he's too weak and would only slow us down. Oh my gosh, this is becoming an emotional roller coaster. The gang then come across a boo house where we need to answer the question which of these four items will help defeat the boos? It's not exactly a Mario specific question. I chose the candle, which turned out to be correct, but there are candles in the boo house in the game and they don't seem super effective, but you whatever, I redeemed myself from the counting question from earlier, that's what matters. After removing the boos from purgatory and finally sending them to the eternal afterlife, we are greeted with many keyholes. Uh, They all look the same. Go with your gut when you answer. I guess we'll just pick a random one and hope for the best. I got it wrong. So as it turns out, this answer is random. Well, how's that educational? That's like if I asked you, hey, what game is in this case? Super Smash Brothers, Mario, Legend of Zelda, or Kirby? And then when I open it up, it's like, I don't know, it's, it's empty right now. But maybe some, maybe next time there'll be something in there, you know? So our next obstacle comes in the form of this lava pit. Kamek turns these blocks invisible and we're presented with three colored switches to turn them solid. You know, just like in the game. Why we can't just hit all three though is beyond me, but whatever, I'll play along. Alright, so if you figured that out, you're smarter than I am. I overthought it again, and I thought that every block needed to be solid. Because, you know, I didn't take into account that the Mario Brothers can jump. Yeah, that thing that they very rarely do. You're a fucking idiot. I've never struggled so much with a children's educational TV show. We also rescue another Yoshi, a sassy little red one that wants to join us. Unfortunately though, he's too small and wouldn't be much help. But that won't stop Red Yoshi, because he will... What the f Oh man, I know that's what Yoshis do and I've probably eaten a ton of enemies while playing a Mario game, but something about this is just so unsettling. Yoshi's face sums it up perfectly. The four are now adventuring together on this educational journey. The show then continues with its formula. Adventure around and ask more questions like, which brother will collect the most coins? What fruit is this? Which tree has yellow petals and red fruits? It's all fun and entertaining. All of this leading up to the Koopa Kids Castle! where the brothers and Yoshi fall into a spiky death trap. The ceiling's coming down on them, and we need to choose which hole the gang can hide in to be safe. I like this question, because it really feels like a scenario you would find yourself in while playing Super Mario World. Or any Mario game for that matter. Oh, thank God they're not dead. That would have been a terrible time for me to have one of my stupid moments. The gang then have a pretty awesome battle with the Koopa Kids, including an almost Wendy death, and it's for the kids! Mario grabs a cape, spins to win, and they rescue a bunch of Yoshi eggs. Because you had a bad day, you take the one down, you save the sad of course it wouldn't be a Super Mario World finale without blowing up the castle. Of course, whoever set up the detonators did a terrible job and needs to be fired. So we need to select the correct one. Follow the line, and it's the blue one. Or, I guess not.
Mario then sends poor Luigi to go over there and see what's wrong. Oh, come on! Why is he the errand boy? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that's so Luigi. What? So, yeah, for the first time ever, the Mario Brothers have a fight, with Luigi being fed up of being treated like a useless sidekick and leaves Mario. And Mario doesn't care one bit, saying, Who needs Luigi? I can do this on my own. What is this? The last thing I expected to be on this children's educational show was brotherly dispute. This is probably the most depth the Mario Brothers have ever had. Red Yoshi eventually convinces Luigi to help his brother, and Mario comes to the realization that he needs his brother's help. And with their powers combined, they become... Super Mario the last question has us essentially defeat Bowser. We can choose if we'd hit him in the air or on the ground. You could select whatever you want here. Either way ends up with Bowser's demise, and the gang rescuing the princess. Everyone is finally happy and... Oh please, not again, don't do this to me, my heart literally can't take anymore. <laughs> Everything wraps up nicely, with Mario calling us one last time, saying we should play again soon. Yeah, they never made any more Mario ones. Which is kind of a shame, because even as an adult, well, you know, adult, I found this anime to be incredibly entertaining. It's well animated, looks very pretty, has a fair amount of action and drama for what's essentially Dora the Explorer, and it pays a lot of tribute to Super Mario World. This is incredibly well made and a really ambitious project for the time. Even if you don't have the toy, I'd still recommend checking these shows out. They're a really interesting piece of history. And they'll make you less dumb, so you don't end up like me. Using this old cell phone, thinking it was a children's toy from the 90s. See you later! Hey! Dollar Shave Club! I'm proud to be working with these guys because they help keep my face smooth and clean and looking like I'm 13 years old forever as possible. But they got much more than just razors, with their body wash, toothpaste, deodorants, and butt wipes! I mean, come on, these things feel so good! Don't judge me. Their executive razor is so good, it makes my face feel just as smooth as a baby's bottom. Or my bottom after I use the butt wipes. <laughs> Why'd I say that? And if you click <clears throat> and if you click the link down below at dollarshaveclub.com slash Connor the Waffle, you can join the club for just five dollars. And doing that will get you the essential starter pack that comes with trial versions of some of their best products. So what are you waiting for? I'm proud to be working with Dollar Shave Club and getting the world to look like the most best looking waffles out there. How you doing? <laughs> So, thanks again, Dollar Shave Club, for sponsoring the video, and thank you, the lovely Wafflings, for always being the best.